Joining us now is SAP CEO Christian Klein, as well as our own Frank Holland. Frank, take it away. All right, thanks a lot, Morgan. Christian, thank you so much for joining us from Sapphire. Great to see you, as always. Yeah, thanks for having me, Frank. All right, so today your stock has outperformed the NASDAQ and the S&P after you raised your guidance for fiscal year 2025. You also authorized an up to $5 billion euro share buyback. Um, again, investors rewarding that decision. Give us a sense, when we get to the numbers of your business right now, the demand picture for your business right now when it comes to cloud and on-prem in the U.S. and globally. I mean, first, uh, the ambition and the ways of our guidance is just a result of the incredible strong momentum we have. Our tech is more relevant than ever. So no matter if a company needs to transform their business model, if we talk about resilient supply chain, or if we talk about running a sustainable business, this is all dependent on SAP. And you saw our announcements around AI today, and that actually leads us to the ambition that we can even further accelerate our total revenue growth in the years to come. All right, so a lot of confidence in the business right now. You actually just wrapped up your financial update a short time ago. You were joined by some of the other board members, really digging into the numbers of the business. I want to talk about the potential of AI. Um, you've announced some pretty big partnerships, partnerships with IBM, Google, and Microsoft when it comes to AI. Where do you see the immediate benefit for AI when it comes to revenue? And are you worried about regulation? We're talking a lot about regulation here in the U.S. with a congressional hearing. The EU Commission has also been, you know, very focused on AI regulation. Yeah, indeed, this is true. And this is why we have an open AI platform. And this is why you see also us closing so many partnerships. And these partners want to also partner with us, with SAP, because our solutions are so relevant for our customers' business. So by embedding AI into our applications, we can touch business processes to drive automation. We can infuse intelligence into their pricing, into their consumer handling. And this is what makes SAP so special in the area of AI. And with regard to regulations in the European Union, this is why we also partner with European AI companies like Aleb Alpha to also satisfy the needs of the public sector in Europe, but of course also in other regulated industries around the world. Hey, Christian, it's John Fort. I'm sitting here in Las Vegas uh, at ServiceNow's uh, conference. We're going to talk about AI here. The CEO here at ServiceNow, you know well, we're going to have on the program tomorrow. But my question is a bit about, I guess you could call it defense. When there are big technology transitions like the one we're looking at with AI, sometimes yesterday's strength can be tomorrow's weakness. SAP has a huge portfolio of successful applications, and you're going to have dozens of smaller companies trying to gain share on you using AI and each one of them. So how are you going to battle that? What should investors think of as your advantages in this environment to actually defend that share and perhaps take some in some instances? Yeah. Yeah, first of all, you should come over to Orlando to feel the excitement here on the on the show floor. And then second, I mean, you've seen our incredible momentum in the last two years. We accelerate our total revenue growth. We have an incredible momentum in our cloud business. We are winning market share. And AI, we are embedding AI in all of our applications. And that will drive further business for SAP. SAP is more relevant with our technology than ever. And this is what you also have seen in our updated guidance today, where we increased our total revenue ambition by over 3.8 billion euros. Okay, but let me just take, say, Concur uh, as an example. Uh, there are other uh, travel apps that are trying to build in AI to make that process uh, faster, more adaptable, more personalized. Is it speed that's going to help uh, SAP to maintain its position there? Is it the partnerships like the ones that you announced today? What's going to keep uh, those barbarians from the gates? I mean, first of all, we already build in AI heavily into our Concur application. So take all the compliance checks or finding you know, the cheapest flights, the cheapest hotel. This is what has been done by human beings before. It's done today by AI. Embedded into Concur out of the box. And then, of course, overall, you saw our announcement with Microsoft on generative AI, which will redefine how companies will recruit and educate their people. And there are many, many more AI use cases in the pipeline. So we are really embedding AI across our portfolio which will drive further momentum for our portfolio. Christian, it's Morgan. Uh, I'm, I'm 
I'm going to channel an interview that happened with John on this show last week, which was Arvind Krishna from IBM, where he talked about what AI is going to do to the labor force and this idea that white collar, quote unquote, clutter jobs, that you're going to see something like 30 percent of those go away, at least at, at that company, but that overall you're going to see more need for more roles uh, as AI becomes more entrenched uh, in businesses and, and in the economy. How do you see it? I mean, first of all, for sure, also SAP will, you know, use internally more and more AI use cases to drive productivity, to accelerate growth. But given that our overall growth momentum is so strong, you know, we don't see necessarily a reduction of workforce. But what we're going to see is that we will grow and accelerate our total revenue while we are keeping our headcount growth, of course, under proportional. Hey, Christian, it's Frank again. Uh, you know, my ears perked up when you said supply chain. That's something Morgan and I both know very well. Um, not that mm -hmm. long ago, Palantir CEO said the biggest demand he saw for their AI product was in supply chain and also manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Give us a sense. What sectors are you seeing the biggest demand for AI in right now? And what are your customers saying yeah. to you about how they want to transform their businesses in areas, you know, outside of the traditional areas we look at when it comes to generative AI? This, see, one more reason why you should come next year to Orlando. That was Pfizer on stage in the morning, and they were talking about SAP supply chain portfolio in the context of AI. So in the past, you know, there was you know a lot of workload needed to actually predict the demand and optimize the supply. Now with our solution, uh, integrated business planning solution, you know, AI helps to predict the demand and optimize the supply and the inventory of our customers, which is used. In the case of Pfizer, it helped them to increase the productivity in their supply chain by over 20%.